Yeah, I'm here today uh, to tell you a little bit about Flow Design Sonics, but more importantly about our acoustic cell processing technology. Um, and it's a pleasure to see a number of people who have made it over from next door. So thank you for joining us. Um, just very briefly, Flow Design is a small startup company uh, based out of Western Massachusetts. Um, and we were founded in 2010 and pivoted into the life sciences in, in 2013. Um, we're now about 45 people, and uh, we've just launched our platform technology uh, called Echo, which is based on acoustics uh, to capture, separate, and manipulate uh, cells and, and particles. And I'll tell you a little bit more about it. But first off, um, just to kind of catch everyone up, uh, my background is in, um, in contract manufacturing. Uh, I was with Lonzo for a number of years. And over those um, engagements with customers, we've seen a number of uh, therapies going through the clinical process, a number of them now being commercialized successfully. Um, but all of them are kind of what I call the first generation therapies, uh, all repurp uh, using repurposed technologies, conventional uh, technologies to uh, manufacture their products. And uh, when I now engage with my former customers, um, all of them seem to engage in kind of optimization processes around reduction of process time, uh, but also reduction of materials uh, and the number of materials they use, ultimately trying to identify a product that is high potency and low dose. Um, and all of that uh, with kind of uh, cost reduction in mind. And I think once we have achieved those goals, uh, the next move that we will see is a more, um, a more focused move to full integration uh, uh, and automation. And then ultimately, particularly in the autologous space, I think we will see a move to decentralization um, for these cell therapies. Um, but as I mentioned, the repurposing aspect has been something that we, we have kind of looked into a bit more and, and in my previous role, but also now, it's always been kind of striking to me that uh, we still use technologies that A, weren't made for cell therapies and B, often weren't made with cell quality in mind because they were repurposed from processes where ultimately the cells were not the key focus. Um, so we still see a lot of centrifugation technologies being used in this space, but also filters, and they come with the obvious downsides. Uh, centrifugation is still often an, an open process where we form a very firm pallet, uh, which need, then needs to be resuspended, which means there's a lot of shear force uh, exerted onto the cells. And filters come with the usual downsides of, of clogging and, and ultimately fouling risks. Um, and often are still uh, manual as well. And I'll go into that in particular in a second. Um, and then we see some, some counterflow activities, obviously, uh, where um, the feedback from the field is that there's still some downsides. They can work with large volumes, which is obviously an upside that we see, but it also means that they need to work with large volumes, which particularly in the cell, uh, in the autologous cell therapy space um, is, is often not exactly what is needed. So with that in mind, um, there's a number of key concerns or key aspects that, that uh, people are addressing at the moment, which is first and foremost, as I just mentioned, quality and cost reduction, but also ease of use, uh, particularly if we're looking to decentralize ultimately, there needs to be a, a very simple and, and plug and play aspect uh, to manufacturing. And uh, the processes need to be, and the technologies need to be scalable uh, and robust and repeatable. So with that in mind, I would like to just briefly introduce uh, to you acoustic cell processing and, and how it works. Um, it starts off with a, a forward propagating wave, which is issued from a, a transducer and is then reflected back um, to create a standing wave. And uh, if at that point you enter a cell suspension into a flow channel, so you have some fluidics uh, in there, the cells ultimately get trapped by these acoustics. Um, and uh, they start to assemble at these nodes where the, where the waves intersect. These nodes are, we call them nodes of calm, but they're low, low force uh, fields, and the cell, cells just naturally um, gravitate to those to those nodes, they start to not aggregate, but assemble. And once those, those, um, those clusters become big enough, they overcome flow and gravity will help them settle out. Or you stop, if the, if the, uh, the, the, um, the clusters are not big enough, they, if you stop flow, then again, um, gravity will help them uh, to settle out. And it's, it's an easy way to then harvest cells uh, once they assemble uh, at the bottom of your vial. 
Um, the technology that we have launched, as I mentioned, is, uh, is called Echo. This is the device uh, that is going into the market now. And it consists of uh, three parts. The top one is the system control unit, which has all of the uh, computer and, and touchscreen interfaces and, and the drivers. Uh, the bottom part is the fluid handling unit, which uh, uh, has all the pumps, valves, and sensors onboarded, as well as the, uh, the, the acoustic transducer and cooling loop. Um, and then in order to, to enable the interface with the cells, oh, apologies, we have the, um, uh, the single-use cartridge at the bottom, um, which is, has a completely integrated flow path um, and is very easy uh, to set up uh, and just to hook up into the system. To move forward, we have now started working with a, a broad range of customers with different cell types, and I, and I want to just introduce to you some of the, the results that we have uh, assembled with customers. So these are early engagements where we bring our system uh, to customer sites and we run their specific processes. And we started off with the most obvious one, which is a single cell uh, suspension, concentrating and washing. Um, where customers have inefficient washing concentration technologies that they're looking to replace. Um, and uh, they obviously want to overcome uh, any sheer um, downsides that they're, they're um, observing, particularly because it reduces the cell viability and, and, uh, and ultimately the cell number that they recover. Um, another one was uh, to overcome and, and reduce the final volumes that they're seeing. And so, uh, here's three examples of cells that we have tested, uh, and on the left there you see what the what the primary focus was for the customers that we work with. So for, for T cells, primary outcome was maximum recovery, as well as a, a short processing time. For pluripotent stem cells, uh, it was a short processing time and a high viability that they wanted to see. And when we worked with the MSCs, um, it was a volume reduction, but also these customers work with a very small uh, cell number, and they uh, wanted to find a process that can deal with that. And these are just one run, uh, so this is an N of one for these, just as an example uh, for, those, for those cells. Um, and we're particularly proud of uh, the, the viability and viable cell recovery that you see, the, the third one from the bottom there, uh, but also the uh, viability change being relatively low. Um, and uh, particularly the MSCs, as I mentioned, we started off with a very low cell number. Um, and cell number is kind of the, one of the key defining factors of how quickly you can process it because it takes a while for the cells to assemble in the acoustics. Um, and we had uh, really good uh, recovery um, for those cells. Another one that has seen, has, has seen a lot of interest, um, we had uh, a, a number of customers that came to us and said, we're working with IPSCs, they're grown in clusters or in aggregates. Uh, we want to maintain the aggregates, but we have some single cells that kind of spontaneously differentiate their contaminants for us, or we have single cells in there that just did not aggregate uh, when, when we inoculated the cultures. We need to get rid of them, and at the moment we're using a sieve that we're pouring the, the cell uh, suspension through and then we try to recover as much as we can. Is there any way that you can automate this? And what we did is um, we just hooked on our system, hooked, hooked it up to the, uh, to the bioreactor, welded it on, and then flowed batches of cells through the acoustics um, and uh, captured the aggregates. The single cells went to waste, and then we returned them to the bioreactor. Um, and the way we do that uh, is outlined here. So what we first, our first step is always in a retention curve where we determine the power that we need to apply to the system uh, in order to optimize cell retention so that you capture your cells of interest. In this case, uh, it was 30 watts. And as you see at the bottom, you see the aggregates and then there's a, this haze in the background which is the single cell contaminants that we're trying to get rid of. And on the right, you see uh, that we started off with about 30% uh, single cell contaminants. Um, and after the, the first run, we had reduced that to less than 5%. And after the second run, we went down to 2%. Um, where, while the, um, the, the aggregates uh, retained their shape, they were in really good, um, the, the visuals were really good, customers were very happy with the, with the, um, the cell architecture, or the, the aggregate archi architecture, and we removed uh, a large part of those single cells. So, just to summarize briefly, um, we've, we work with single cells of, of various kinds. Uh, we've now added fibroblasts and keratinocytes as well as, as cell types that we have tested. Um, we've 
done a number of runs on the, um, on the pluripotent stem cells grown in clusters, iPSCs as well. Um, but we've also done a number of um, engagements with customers who are looking to pro uh, process apheresis. Uh, in the first instance, the interest was to wash out uh, and ultimately wash in again uh, cryoprotectant. Um, a side effect of that was that just by doing those washes, we also removed a good number of the platelets. That was not the focus, but it was a nice side effect to have and, and can surely be optimized to, to um, improve that. And uh, I want to mention uh, one other thing, which is uh, the electroporation preparation. So as an upfront step for preparation uh, to electroporate cells, a number of our customers have asked us to, to test how low we can go in volume. Um, and then can we formulate uh, to prepare for electroporation uh, with the appropriate buffers? And with the uh, minimum cell um, volumes or, or, or volumes that we have for harvest of five milliliters, depending on cell number, um, we've seen really good results there. Um, and I've mentioned the single cell removal harvest wash and the buffer exchange. So just to Close out, as I say, we're currently engaging with uh, initial customers around uh, evaluations of the system. Um, the way we do that is that we, we come in uh, and we bring the system and we run uh, the, the customer's uh, specific processes with their key, key goals um, as, a, as a focus point. Um, and so far, the results have been good, so any interest, we'd love to talk to you about that. Um, but ultimately, what we think uh, we have is that we have a, a technology-driven solution with a focus on cell quality and, and the cell and gene therapy space. Um, so we feel that the technology addresses the current shortcomings that the industry is facing. Um, the cell quality is uh, very much maintained uh, at a very high level. Uh, it is... Uh, truly scalable. Um, we do have a, a partnership with Paul uh, in the biologic space. Uh, they process up to 2,000 liters, so we know that we can, we can go up, even though the, the system that we have right now is uh, definitely more suited to autologous cell therapy um, and, and smaller scales. Um, cost reduction, I think, uh, by having an underpinning technology, which is also suitable to cell selection, which will be our, our next um, product. Uh, we feel that ultimately we can move, uh, when the time comes, we can move to integration um, and an all-in-one approach uh, as, as appropriate. Um, so ultimately, simplifying manufacturing and uh, facilitating close processing. Um, and with that, uh, I'm happy to take questions. Thank you. Yeah, so um, there's, there's two approaches to take. So at the moment, as you saw in the, when, when I uh, showed you the outline of how it works, it's a perpendicular, you have a perpendicular flow with regards to the, uh, to the acoustics. If you, if you, if you angle uh, the flow with regards to the acoustics, we call it an angled wave, um, you can separate out cells by size, for example. Um, the next product that we're working on right now is more conventional. It, it uses antibody, so an affinity-based uh, approach where we have a proprietary bead technology that is very acoustically responsive. So we'll be held back um, by the acoustics and any non-captured uh, cells will just flow through. So then you can do, we, we've got uh, quite a, a broad range of data uh, around negative selection where we remove TCR positive cells uh, for an allogeneic T cell approach. Um, but you can also do positive selection for your target cells. Yes. 